Shalom, Shalom, my brothers and sisters of the nation of Yasharel. This is one of your sisters, um, Miss Lady Lifestyle, Yolanda Yehuda. Okay, so I want to continue by giving the glory to the Most High Yah. All glory to Him. All glory to His Son, Yahushua Hamashiach. All glory to the Ruach HaKadosh, um, the Holy Spirit, which is the Mother. I would like to give you our peace and blessings, um, your whole entire family, um, from this forward, okay? I just feel the word coming out, and I normally just share. I just share. I get the word. I feel it. I just get up and start sharing to groups, to my page, to my storyline. I have other platforms that I share, so I pray that it's all received, okay? So what came through my my mind and my spirit and my energy because the time that we're living in, I just want to say that the the way I came across um, that this scripture has to be for real, for real, is because I came through Obadiah 1. I was in the city. I was looking around, like window shopping, <laughs> waiting for friends to finish their job. And I came across Obadiah 1. So long, um, I've heard uh, Deuteronomy 28, 15, and 68. And I was reading all those uh, prophecies that was given to us, right, in Deuteronomy. So when I asked people, why are we going through this? What's going on? Why do they walk past me like I don't even exist? And, and why do they talk to me and, and why we had to be slaves and, and all this, you know, because, you know, I was born in 69, you know, but I know that there's the completed version that was 1611. So I was clear that people older than me, years older than me, my grandma lived to 98. You know, I met my great grandma, you know, so and she lived to 102. And I asked them, why did we have to go into slavery? Oh, because, you know, we didn't listen, and, you know, and here we go. Um, just read Deuteronomy 28, 15, and 68, because we didn't hearken him to his word. Whoa, I said to myself. I grew up in the nation of Islam since I was two, so I was totally unaware of all these things. And when I was 21, I was given the scriptures. But guess what? It was like a white chick with blonde hair and blue eyes. And I'm like, why is she giving me this book? You know, but she was she knew that we talked and I was so headstrong with Islam that I wasn't really giving her a chance. <laughs> so she just said, You know what, Yolanda? What did Prophet Muhammad do for you? What did Prophet Muhammad do for you? I said, Well he brought me the word. Like what? You know, and he gave me discipline and, and now, you know, and structure. He said, no, what did he do for you? And I'm like, that's it. So she says, um, well, you know what Christ did for me? You know what Christ did for us? And I'm like, what? And she said, he died for us. He died for you too, so that your sins can be forgiven. Now, I knew I wasn't all right. <laughs> but I says, really? Like, Prophet Muhammad didn't die for me. <laughs> you know? I said, you know, or my sins or anything like that. She said, well, you call on Christ, you know, and he'll save you from your sins. You know, da, da, da. Right? So, you know, like I was saying earlier, she gave me the book. I put it in my drawer. She's like, she highlighted Matthew. She highlighted um, a lot of scriptures in, in Matthews and the New Testament. But she really didn't highlight anything in the Old Testament, right? So I went to the Old Testament and was starting to read. And, you know, what I got from that was, you know, the tribes. The son of who? The son of what? And who he married? And where were they? And then the who? And who had what? And, okay, all right. So at least I know that there was a lineage of people that went through these things and that's in these scriptures. But to me, it was like... Not going in a jungle, 
but they telling me about all these animals that live in the jungle. Like I don't I never seen that. I never seen this. I never seen this animal and I never seen that insect. And I never seen Okay, so that's how the scriptures was to me. I never really knew who was who and who was who, but I knew the white man and I knew he didn't like like us and I knew the, the history behind slavery and that stuck in my head. That was seared into my brain. So as I kept going on and reading scriptures, I did the Deuteronomy 28. And yes, we fit the curses. And it was heartbreaking. It was so heartbreaking because I said, oh, my God, if they would have just listened, if we would, if my ancestors would have just listened to me, I felt like there was not that many distractions like there are now. You know, like right now you have TV, you have Internet, you have phone, you have a watch, you have Internet. I mean, laptop, you have a computer, you have so many devices and activities and technology to just lure you away from not really listening to the most high, right? I don't even understand it. But I understand through life that we make our errors and we fall short for the, from the, for the glory of the most high, right? So I read the, the Deuteronomy 1 to 15, and it was all the blessings. And I'm like, oh, man, I, why did we didn't listen? And, and if I would have known and all of that. <laughs> so here's Deuteronomy 15, Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 to 68. You could read those things, right? And then, you know, it made me sad, like, you know, you, you shall have a wife and another man lie with her. And I'm thinking about the rape, you know, because they must have been married, you know, before we got here. And now you have your wife, which they showed us roots all the time, roots after roots after roots. I knew Alex Haley before I knew Christ, Messiah, Yahushua Hamashiach. But I knew Alex Haley wrote roots. Okay. Thank you for your patience and understanding. I just want to get this off so that um, I pray that it helps and edify someone, you know, and encourage someone to read the scriptures, see where I'm going with this, all glory to the most high, because things are coming, they, things are coming along. They're coming along real fast, real rapid, and it's all glory to the creator, but I feel like the the, um, the ones who did, don't know were able to take my way of delivering it um, to their benefit, okay? All right, so the Deuteronomy 28.68 is all I heard. We're going to be oppressed, crushed always. People are getting killed. Matter of fact, the knee is on a, a, a brother from offices. Like, are you serious? Woo! You don't know. You might know, but you just don't know to my level. Why? Because I lost my son. You know, my son was so sick of this world and sick of these people and sick of the situation. And listen, he just went to the father. I found him in the closet. And it was devastating. And I just wanted him to endure. It was hard. It's a struggle. But I just needed him to endure with me because it was hard for me too. But I'm so glad I had him in 97. And now I'm thinking 2019, we're about to be up out of this. We're about to be up out of this. And January 21st, 2019, I found my baby. So please help me with this, Father. Please help me with this, the Ruach HaKadosh. Most of all, Abba Yah, I'm your child. Please help me with this. Okay, because so many brothers, and then these sisters get on the act about condemning you, and then also, you know, with their little cocky responses and stuff like that. And it's like, whatever, just give me the truth tell the truth, or leave me the hell alone because conversation with a liar is not what I want to have, right? 
All right. So reading the scriptures, seeing what's going on, I thought I knew about that. Then I went into, um, I was on my phone, which I have the scriptures on my phone, and I'm reading through scriptures, and something came to me about Obadiah 1. All right, so then I started reading it. All right, the vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. I'm like, okay, I knew the white man. I definitely knew the white man, and by that time, I knew about Jake, Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. I know Jacob was black like everybody else. And Esau came out red all over with hair all over. And I got pictures to show it. They even came out their mouth to say that they're Esau. They're the descendants of Esau. Okay. I knew that Esau lost his name because he's give, he, he gave his birthright to Jacob. And he, they, and because for some porridge or something he wanted to eat like Lemton soup or something like that. And they called him Edom, which means red uh, Edom. Like he wasn't happy. He wasn't satisfied with what he had. And the father called him Edom, right? And there's no nation of Esau because he of what he did. He le lost his birthright. Okay, so anyway. So now continue. It says, The vision of Obed Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her and battle. Now, I really couldn't understand that, right? So I said, all right, let me just read on. Behold, I have made thee small amongst the heathens. Thou art greatly despised. So then I said, well, wait a minute. Are we Edom? Because we are greatly despised, right? But then I kept reading. Pride of thy heart has deceived thee. Thou hast dwelt in the cliffs of the rocks. Okay, that's not us. Whose habitations is high, okay? And, um, that said in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Woo, listen. I'm in the city. Manhattan, doing work hours. So you could just imagine me walking up a street from like what I, I think I was like 6th to 7th, 6th Street, street um, 6th Avenue to 7th Avenue. And that's a long block. All right. It had to be about three blocks, regular ordinary blocks. But that's how long 6th to, six to 7th Avenue is. Now I'm reading it. In the meantime, and white people are just coming, walking right past me. I'm like, ignore me, because what I'm about to read is pertaining you, and I'm about to tell you who you are and what's about to go down. <laughs> but they just kept on going, working, all stuffy, all stuck up, like they don't have a care in the world. And I'm like, okay, let me continue reading. I'm going to go into Starbucks, and I'm going to pick a little table and have my little um cappuccino whatever your frappuccino with uh, a brownie and i got into the scriptures right so now i continue reading thou has exalted thyself as an eagle and that and through and, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars hence thence will i bring thee down saith the lord i said okay they do that all right What's going to happen? If these thieves came to you, if robbers by night, how art thy cut off? Would you not have stolen till they had enough? If the great gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not even into stealing, but, you know, dag, if I was at a tree, and I was hungry, I would just take grapes that I could fit in my hand or in my blouse and go into to the house to wash them off and eat them. I wouldn't just do the whole tree and, and be gone, you know what I'm saying? I would just, you know, that's me by nature. All right. So they said, 
how are this is o, um, Obadiah 1 verse 6 how are the things of Esau searched out how are his hid his hid things sought up all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee into a, the border the men that were at peace with thee have this, um, deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They, they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is no understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, say the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? Thy mighty men, O Timah, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Woo! I said, I thought I had a secret. <laughs> I thought I had such a secret that it was between me and the Most High, and I was told this story. So I said, Thy mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Mm, mm, mm. For the, okay, so I heard that. Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Okay? For the violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. I said, what? I'm looking down, sipping my tea, sipping my <laughs> frappuccino, having my little brownie. And I'm like, okay. I prayed. I said, let me brace for this. Let's see what's going on. Because I said, that's the key. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Let me continue. 11. In the day that thou stood on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captives, his forces, and uh, what is those foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots um, upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them. Okay? So, yes, he's our brother. He was as one of us. And now they are just going wild with it. And this was like, um, I would say 2017 that I kind of discovered this. You know, my son was around right now. You know, but I think 2017, I would say I discovered this. Okay, so in the day that thou stoodest, on the other side, in the, the day uh, um, that the strangers carried away, okay, captives, his forces. Okay. Now, I am reading from the King James Version 1611. So I'm going to try and go up here and get the standard King James, get the Obadiah, so that, you know, and this is in the Old Testament. It's not in the New Testament. But Revelation 19 reflects it. In 18 reflects this. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in the, the regular language for now. You know, thy art and endureth and all that. All right. Thank you for bearing with me. Okay. So, yeah, I was at, 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 at 12. Okay. But thou should have not have looked on, the, on, on that day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither should have thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. And I'm really certain about that because, you know, that puts me in the mind of when they was lynching brothers and sisters and, 
and cutting the belly, cutting the babies out the belly and feeding them to alligators and, you know, all this stuff that they was doing and probing us and, and um, sticking prongs in our women and, 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 and cutting them without anesthesia. Oh, you just didn't know. I'm like, I'm not that person in those errors. However, I have to understand what was going on at, the, at that time because we did disobey. All right, we did disobey. Thou should not have entered the gates of thy people in the day of their calamities. Yeah, thou should not have looked on their afflictions in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Mm. You didn't know. I wanted to tell everybody that came into Starbucks in 2017. That this is going to bestow upon you. You know, but I felt like I'm in the middle of their uh, borders of wickedness. And you just never know that would have happened to, to me at Starbucks at that time. Right? But this is what was bestowed upon me. So I shared it with a close companion because I didn't want to keep this to myself. You know what I'm saying? I said, if it made me happy, it will make somebody else happy. Neither shall that have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. So, you know, me, roots came up again in my mind. And you know how they had the Kuta Kente? And then, you know, he grew up and, you know, and, you know, and married and got his foot cut off for running. And all those people that did escape, like Django and all them other ancestors that ran. that they shouldn't have put their hand on us. So if we did find a way to escape, you know, because Peter escaped the, the, uh, the jail. Um, there were people who have escaped. Then that should have been it. The father it gave them a way out. They found a way out. Now y'all came and y'all rounded up with the cavalry, the horses and the cops, and y'all took and um, y'all went back and searched for them, right, to bring them back to their hardship. Okay, what goes around, come around. Okay, y'all think you're going to run away from your troubles, but you're going to be surrounded and captured. Okay. For the day that the Lord is near upon all the heathens. Did you hear that? A heathen. Okay, upon all the heathens. Okay, now this reminds me now of this coronavirus. Because a lot of people who was falling short, what, are heathens? As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. Oh, hallelujah. Wait, you going to kill us? Keep killing us, y'all, because the kill is going to come right back onto you. And you might not like it. Matter of fact, you won't like it. But this is what, you know, so I'm saying at that time, I'm still sharing. I'm still communicating. I'm still sharing. And I'm letting them know, especially when they was taking the students and flipping up out their chair and harassing them and treating them rough. Like if somebody did that to their daughters, they would not like it. That's coming up for their daughters too, okay? All right, so continue. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathens drink continuously. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. Hallelujah. They said, we're going to go down places and not see none of them around. Okay, so now I'm not wishing death upon anybody, but that borderline of wickedness, we're done with that. Enough is enough. And this prophecy is what's going to transpire now. Oh, Father, please do not keep silent. Please, Abba Yah, do not keep silent. You put that wrath on them. That cup of wrath, it said it's doubled. You know, so we had a hardship. We had our hardship, poverty, whippings, being ripped apart of our family, 
our dads going off to jail or being told to get out the house or else we won't be able to survive and eat. We had them hardships, but who put those hardships on us? They did. And guess what? We wasn't the ones that disobeyed, even though we disobey it now. But we're not the ones that disobeyed. But it fooled on our, the children of that time. Okay? It fell on the children at that time. So now he raised up us to be living amongst our enemies. Okay? And... We have to do what we have to do. We have to live how we have to live and survive for 400 years, which the years are over, and now I see a transition of what is supposed to happen. So let me give you a heads up. This scripture is real. And as soon as I see them calamities, I say, yep, the Father is dealing with all these heathens, Edomites, Moabs, all of them. You find out who you are. You like an animal in a jungle to me. You are like an animal in a jungle to me right about this time. I'm reading this Bible like an animal book. And when people are going through things, I go right to the scriptures. Oh, oh, they like this because this is what this says. And they're doing this and this is what this says. This is going to transpire. Okay? All right. So even though he, we are his natural branches, like in Romans 11, 22 talks about, or Romans 11, listen, we are his natural branches, and we're going through things. Okay? And, and he loved us, you know, which according to his word in Romans 9, 11, or I mean uh, 9, 13, that he loved Jacob and he hate Esau. I don't care who you say Esau is. He's hated. Listen, it doesn't matter who Esau is. As long as I know who Jacob is, it doesn't matter who Esau is. Y'all could call him the white man. Y'all could call him the Arabs. Y'all could do whatever the nonsense y'all choose to do. But just like a dog will always be a dog and a cat will always be a cat, a zebra cannot change his stripes. Okay, and I never seen a dog meow, and I never seen a cat bark. Okay, so y'all get yourselves twisted because now I know that there's a man, there's a boy, and there's a girl, and y'all gonna tell me to confuse my mind because your mind is confused. You're bugging. A boy will always be a man, and a girl will always be a girl. I don't care if she has on hoodie, jeans. Tim's, you know, with her hair cut short. That child, that girl will always get her period. And and if, if she don't have a baby, then she'll never be a mother. But she'll always have a period unless she gets her womb taken out. I haven't seen a, 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 a lesbian talk about taking out her womb. I don't like being a girl. I don't like having my period. So I'm going to take my womb out. Give it to somebody else that needs it. People need an arm. People need kidneys. People need livers. People need a face transplant. People need a womb. I'm one. I need a womb. <laughs> Fibroids. All of that happened to me. And they suggested that I get a fibro uh, um, hysterectomy because the wound where the um, fibroids was located instead of telling me to change my diet. Just change my diet and those, those fibroids would go away. But they didn't say that. They said, oh, we're going to have to cut. We're going to have to cut and, and, and burn those things. Like, okay, so what's my chances of getting pregnant? Oh, 50-50, we just don't know. Okay, but you still have your period. All right, so all them lesbos that don't want to have children and don't want to be a freaking female, give up your womb. Tell me that you donate your womb to me so that I can have babies. I can have my son again. Okay, I don't want to hear about your problems. 
I don't care about your lesbian problems, okay? All I care is that you have a womb that you're not using, and it could go to someone else that does want to have children or more children, okay? So all that selfishness that y'all experience, who cares? Nobody cares, okay? No one cares. No one. No one cares. Just get the womb. You don't want to have your period. You don't want to have them feminine things about yourself. Just donate your womb to a woman that would love to have more children, like me. Hello. Hi. I would love to have a womb transplant from, from a lesbian who don't even want to be a female no more. <sighs> Sickening. So anyway, let's continue because them heathens are doing that. Okay, you might as well just give up your womb, girl, and 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 let other people have them. Donate those, okay? All right, so you go on without all this confusion in this world. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Man. I did not wake up thinking <laughs> I was going to be smiling at these scriptures like I have been. And every time people get upset and get annoyed with them, I'm like, oh, read Obadiah 1. Just one chapter, yo. Just one chapter, yo. Just read the whole thing, yo. You'll be just as happy as I am. They're like, what? I'm like, you never heard of Obadiah vision? No. Okay? Even on white chicks. When they get out of line, I tell them Obadiah 1, yo. Just go to Obadiah 1. It's like Deuteronomy 28, one, uh, 15 to 68. Okay? All right. Ooh, don't hear from them again. <laughs> they are a humble soul. They be a humble spirit when they read Obadiah. Okay, so the great news is that Jacob will have their possessions, will possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And I'm like, ooh, what does that mean? It should be a fire. And the house of Joseph, a flame, right? And the house of Esau, a stubble, a stubble, a stubble, okay? Stubble. <laughs> and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall be none, there should be not any remaining in the house of Esau. Do you see the italicis? They have it in those little italics, fancy names, fancy words. No, be any remaining in the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. I'm like, Ugh. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plains the Philistines, and they shall possess the field of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead, the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites. Mm. Well, you know, I'm in a jungle now, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to connect who's who and who's is who, and this was the perfect one to help me with that who's who's and the who's who's, okay? Because if I was in that jungle... I only know a dog and a cat. I know an alligator. I know frogs and um, zebras and giraffes and bears and, you know, elephants and things like that. I know a snake, but do I really know a snake? You know? I know the snake will, like, you know, crawls on his belly. And, hold on, let me put this back on. Crawls on his belly. You know, but what else do I know about a snake? Where are they located? Where do they live? Where do they hibernate? Where do they, you know, what foods do they eat? No, not at all. But this Bible is telling me exactly who Esau is and exactly what to look for around Esau. Where in the high cliffs, he's reaching the stars, you know, and, and, and now all of this. He's greatly despised. He sure is, okay? And this was way before Trump, okay? But they were still greatly despised. 
Okay. So this and okay, so now um the captive the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess that of Canaanite even unto um Zara Zaraf Zarephath and the um captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Shep Sheparod, shall possess the city cities of the south. Okay? The Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdoms shall be the Lord's. Ooh, hallelujah. What? I've read Obadiah so many times. I cut and paste. I cut and paste. Matter of fact, I want to cut and paste this right now. This is what I do. I read this. Since, oh, man, I praise the Father. Oh, I praise the Father, right? And then I take it right here to Facebook, y'all. They're going to be like, she posting this again? Who cares? <laughs> Maybe you's forgot. <laughs> Maybe you's forgot. So I'm about, oh, the brother. Okay, oh, bless his soul and his family. Okay. So now I'm going to go here, and I'll go here to my page, <laughs> and i paste it. You never know. Somebody might be feeling kind of way, especially after George Floyd put the in, in D, um, Breonna Taylor. Hmm. Huh. You think that's not going to happen to them? You think a foot's not going to go on one of their necks? You think not? <laughs> All right. You highly mistaken. Okay. Okay. So I read those scriptures, right? Or oh, glory to the Creator. So as I'm going and learning and reading over the years. And then, you know, the tragedy happened with my son, but the father gave me a scripture of him opening the graves. He's going to put the bones together. He's going to give the new skin. He's going to have them stand up. And he's going to command the wind to breathe the life back into them. And then they, oh, man, and I, they're going to be an ex exceedingly great army. Now, are they going to be the saviors? Y'all better watch out because my son will remember all of y'all. Okay? And I know he met the Messiah. You know, Yahushua, um, Yahushua HaMashiach is the king of all armies? And you want to tell me he's not going to roll with him? Y'all have not met my son. <laughs> and he is going to be on a roll with all of y'all. If not now, dealing with all them heathens that passed away. All right, so I said to myself, you know, this is how I go through certain things. I would just say, you know, prophesy, you go through search. If you don't know particular scriptures, I just go to the search of the Bible and I look, prophesy. And it gives you the, um, all the King James versions, Old Testimony, New Testament, Moni and Apocrypha. All right, so you get this Numbers 11, um, 27, and there ran a young man and told Moses and said, um, Elbod and me, Dad, do prophesy in the camp. Uh, you know, just whatever is you feel like is connecting with you, then I would just say read them, do your search on them, you know, so that you'll know um, other scriptures as you can read line by line. Uh, precept upon precept, here, here a little, there a little, right? And, you know, the Most High has talked about um, everybody, everybody. I'm telling you, this, this book is like an animal book. Everybody, who you need to know about, they would tell you, okay? So they told you, prophesy, prophesy. Okay, so I read that. I'll probably do a lesson on that, too, but it just hits home okay so now it says you know in the scriptures to watch this is this scriptures that line that says watch like just watch and then, in the way the scriptures word it has to be from a person of color because how they talk is how i would talk you know i would i've heard brothers talk like that you know so then you know he breaks down all that he has to say and then a sentence, a one-word one sentence, watch. 
Like, try me. Watch me. <laughs> Are you going to say something? Watch. <laughs> so I said, whoa. I said, yeah. Watch. And it says, watch pro prophecy unfold. Like, unfold. Like, oh, my gosh. Let me see if I can get that watch. Because, you know. Okay. Let me see if I can find that, yo. Because when they said, watch, I was like, whoa, watch, watch. I got like 10, all these pages. <laughs> I don't even know if it's in the Apocrypha. But that watch, It says, Mark 13, 37, and what I said unto you, I say unto all, watch. <laughs> yeah, I got to take that, you know, I got to take that, right? It says, for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants. And to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the, uh, uh, is that cock crawling, crawling, or in the morning, lest cometh coming suddenly. He finds you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Matter of fact, you know I got to copy that, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because somebody's going to get that. Somebody is sleeping out there, and that made sense to them. So I'm just going to share it on my page. Oh, listen, if a person could share their butt, tits, um, behind, um, nose implant, <laughs> what they eat, all that that they do, listen, share. And you think that's helping me to sit there. I mean, I do like it. You know, I watch your dogs, you know, be rehabilitated. I watch, you know, from adoption. I watch, you know, your animals, you know, do certain things. And, and I get a better understanding of how, animals uh, react and interact it's like so amazing so you know i appreciate those i want y'all to appreciate the, the most high words because he's he's not just saying it to me he's saying it to all watch <laughs> all right so in the note taken i'm taking right i shared that you know that it has all these what you call it Things that's happening in the news, prophecies that's coming in true, like the floodings, bombings, hurricanes, plagues, pestilence, blood, uh, you know, soon to be blood water, which I see a lot of right now, and death of the firstborn. These are like the prophecies that was of Egypt. They said that it's just going to be magnified now. It's just going to come out more, 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 you know? So these are the things that I look out for because we have went through similar situations. My garbage just fell. All right, so what the, the Father had put on my heart, you know, a lot of people call him the Lord. You know, I read the cipher, which is the Elohim, which is um, Abba Yah, Yahuwah. You know, it, it talks about um, the Adonai, the Adonai and the Elohim, which is, you know, I would say it would be Christ, the Messiah which, you know, it says Yahushua HaMashiach, you know, but people say Jesus, and, you know, but then I hear J's never existed in Hebrew, so who is Jesus? But in the scriptures, the Old Testament says it's Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So they call them Emmanuel. Um, I'm getting a lot of information. 
you know, so I just choke it up as learning, just like in high, in school. I went through 12 years of learning. Who cares about the social studies? Who cared about Abraham Lincoln? Who cares about um, Con Edison? Who cares about Smith and Wesson? But we have to learn these things because we're going to be graded on how much we have absorbed, right? So now I'm getting this information to absorb it, absorb it, absorb it, absorb it. Because when it comes to prophecy, things are going to just be clear. Oh, that's what's in, that's what's in chapter. That's in chapter. That's in chapter. Now, to you, you might think, oh, wow, she really studied. She really got that. You know, but the prophecies are lining up. And if you were smart enough to tell me about Deuteronomy 15, no, Deuteronomy 28, 15, and 68, I'm going to be smart enough to tell you about Obadiah 1. Revelations 18, you know, all that, all that good stuff, okay? All right. So now, when I look at TV now, you know, my son passed away in 2019, and I'm like, oh, man, this stuff better come true because my son, he's gone for no reason. And, and here they got us again, like they got me again, these lying you know, brothers, you know, but they wasn't lying. You know, this is scriptures, and they was bringing out information. And I just have to, when I was reading scriptures, it was more like, this is going to happen, but they're going to slide on the sword. It's not going to happen overnight, but these prophecies, like, it didn't happen to us overnight. It was 400 years of this. And, you know, and these people still think they can get away with this stuff. But all they're doing is, you know, the cup of wrath. You know, we had a cup of wrath. And we had to deal with it. We had to deal with all our sins, all our transgressions, all our iniquities. We had a cup. Okay? But now what they're going through is they're going to get the cup, but it's doubled. And it's overflowing. Okay? So, whoa. I know if my dad could whip me, my dad could punish me, and it's not for, you know, he's doing it for correction, chastisement, so that it could bring us closer to him. And that's understandable. Like, I wasn't here. Now I'm here. And now, you know, I'm correcting your behavior. Okay? And I'm appreciative. Okay? So I'm thinking, this got to be like any moment now, any moment now, any moment now. Okay, so 2020 came around. That was a year. This has been a year. But I noticed floodings. And I'm like, where will this water come from? They're just flooding and flooding and flooding and flooding like they never flood ever in their life, Okay. And I, I, I was saying, dang, that's flooding. I know the glaciers was melting, and I know that that would lift, um, the currency would be higher because of all the ice melting in the Arctic. But it also showed me here that when I Google it, Google things of our lifetime, you know they had um, brothers, sisters being tossed off in the water. Mm, mm, mm. And they drowned. They drowned. Either they were tossed off or they were, like, pushed off or they jumped. But to have this statue down in the, under, un, in the water, it's like a sign. It's, like, significant, right? It was just awesome, yo, awesome. And here all this fish and all these things that's in the, on the water or, ah. Uh, Rest in peace. I don't even know of these ancestors. You know what I'm saying? So devastating. So just say say this is that the flood is like the days of Noah. We are in the days of Noah. We are currently in the days of Noah. Not not everybody experienced floods, but them Chinese, with the Moabs, the Ammonites, um, all of them. Even some Hamites experienced flooding, y'all. Flooding, flooding, flooding. 
And um, and that reminds me, I'm like, oh, how would there be a flood for 40 days and 40 nights and wipe out all these other people? Because you know how much rain had to fall, 40 days and 40 nights? And then you just, okay, it just, the streets are no more. Your first floor, second floor, third floor is gone. 40 days and 40 nights, we have a break here. But in those days, it was no break of rain. And then once it comes up to the garages, <laughs> if you were not on stilts, uh, what you call those, those sticks, stilts, all that, having a, a 10-foot pipe all around to make sure that your house did not go in the water, I can see how the flood wiped out all those people. Okay? Okay. So, you know, you know, throwing us overboard and having us drown during um, slavery, you know, I could totally understand this flooding situation, right? Because they say it's going to be like the days of Noah. Now, the bombings are crazy too, y'all. The bombings are crazy too. But then it also leads me back here. And this bombing, they did the uh, Black Wall Street, they bombed. They, um... Okay, you know about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, so you know they're not they're not forgetting that. Um, they bombed these little girls at a church. They threw bombs on us. And you talking about that bomb that happened in Nashville, okay? It's only the beginning. He said it's gonna be like birth pains, travail. Do you understand that? So he's giving y'all grace to repent. So that pan pain that gave me this. The Bible, if she's still around, <laughs> you know, because I did not hate her, you know, she's my coworker, you know, but I just was questioning why would she give me this scripture to trap me or to educate me? You know what I'm saying? Did she like me enough to save my soul or did she hate me that much to trap me in this, in these scriptures? You know what I'm saying? So that's why it took me a while to pick up the scriptures and started reading it, you know? That was my only dilemma. It's like, I'm not accepting that white Jesus. I'm not accepting that cracker all day long, okay? You know, but I do respect the word. And the scriptures is right, you know? But what this man looked like, he didn't die for nobody. He didn't try and save nobody's soul but his own, you know? So I just wasn't feeling that, that, that Edomite, you know? But reading Revelations uh, 1, 14 through 15, um, I can say, yes, he is definitely a black man, a black Messiah, a Hebrew Messiah. And um, I love him for that, you know, and I could recognize that he is the only begotten son from the dead for the most high. So, yes, Christ did die. And, you know, and he sacrificed, he was a sacrificial lamb for our ancestors and us to this day. You know, so I do appreciate um, the Messiah. The, um, and I'm happy. I'm happy to wake up knowing that he's from the tribe of Judah. You know what I'm saying? He could have been from any other tribe, but he came through the tribe of Judah. So I'm so blessed and happy and be patient with it, right? All right. Ooh, let's continue because this is deep, right? So this is the prophecies unfolding. So, okay, so y'all threw us in the rivers. You know, y'all, um, you know, drowned our babies. Y'all did all this to us and what goes around come around. So now y'all having all these floodings going on, going on around. Bombings happening. So, you know, that bomb in Nassau, is, um, in Nashville, is just the beginning. But, you know, it didn't even come from us. We didn't even do it, you know. But the Most High is putting into this wicked nation's to be wicked to each other, okay? Hurricanes. Now, you know, you can see all these hurricanes and uh, uh, tsunamis. They have the hurricanes a lot. What is this other one? A cyclone, you know? All these um, hurricanes looking, right? So now I go here in scriptures, which is Google images and stuff like that, and you see all these hurricanes. Look at that, yo. Look at that picture. You know that, yes, it's a hurricane. It's a hurricane. So here she is. 
and she coming for her children. She is coming for her children. So now when you take a path of how the hurricanes come, they come through the, uh, what you call that? The transatlantic slave um, way. Because they don't, they start out of Africa. Yes, she is starting out of Africa. Yes, you do. And I don't even get Kushai, Kisha, whatever you want. You already know these people are evil and, 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 and um, they have a lot of us, okay? So, you know, they take the, uh, hurricanes take the pathway of Africa, the transatlantic slave system. And, you know, with the hurricanes, they're more prevalent now, you know? So the water drowning us in ships and all this. Y'all getting it. Y'all going to get it. Y'all going to get it. All these heathens and the Edoms, um, Esau's, y'all going to get it. Y'all keep bragging and boasting. It doesn't look good for you. Okay, so the hurricanes is like coming for us. You know, my children are here. I know they're here. I'm coming for them, and I'm going to wreak havoc. You're going to build, and I'm going to destroy. Yeah, you have a, a townhouse and, and, and uh, uh, on pasture. Well, here come a tornado. Here come a hurricane, and it's going to crush that little dream you had. And now you're going to be like, oh, we so poverty. We will rebuild. And he says the scriptures, and he will throw down. Okay? So y'all keep building. Y'all build up. Um, Nashville, Tennessee, something's going to happen. It's going to be destruction all over again. All right, so now plagues. We have this coronavirus. We have all, you know, y'all inject us quickly. Y'all inject us. Y'all inject us with smallpox. A, a lot of us broke out and died because of that because they trust y'all behinds. Um, what else? Y'all inject us with so many vaccinations and stuff like that. And, you know, and people have problems, you know, along the way because of that. Shame on you. So these uh, plagues that's upon y'all, y'all going to have to deal with it. Wear your mask six feet apart because I don't want your nasty behinds around me. Okay? And what? Stay home. Do whatever you got to do <laughs> because these are your plagues. Okay, and if we're amongst you, it says for in Revelation, for us to come out of her, my people, so that we won't be participants in any of their plagues. Cut it out. Cut it out. These are your plagues. And y'all put it, y'all brought it on to yourselves. Your forefathers brought it on to you. Now you're gonna and y'all continue do now if y'all didn't do continue doing it. Then, you know, grace and all that would have, who knows? But my father knew what was in you. He knew what was coming out of you. And, and he says there's no repentance in them. So these plagues, they gave us um, smallpox and syphilis. They gave syphilis to brothers, and they didn't even have it. And you didn't even give them a cure for it. How dare you? Okay? Oh, man. Pestilence. Pestilence is like the locusts that we see. Pestilence is like um, locusts, you know, frogs. Um, now, these animals are coming, honey. Like the animals came on us. Like y'all had those old dogs. All y'all dogs attack us and eat us and bite us and eat us. Y'all had your dogs do that? Ah, Barbara said he has um, the Leviathan, okay? And the Leviathan is coming after y'all. All of them that has pride. Oh, the Proud Boys. Oh, Proud Boys, stand by and stand, I mean, stand back and stand by. That's what the uh, Trump has said to them, right? The Proud Boys, they're going to be Leviathan's dinner. So y'all keep being Proud Boys. Because the Leviathan eats the pride. It's in scriptures. Okay, let me tell you. Oh, let me see. Let me just put Leviathan. 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 All right. Can thou? This is Job 41.1. Can thou draw out Leviathan with a hook or his tongue with the cord which has 
lets down. Thou breakest the head of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Mm. There goes the ships that uh, there is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. Mm. And in that day the Lord with his swords and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan in piercing the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that uh, crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Mm, mm, mm. All right, and so you're going to have to worry about that. And I know they have movies about the Leviathan, you know, all over now, <laughs> you know. And so I watched uh, Mike Malice, A Peace and Blessings, The Opponent. So he's still alive, you know, but Mike Malice, um, had come out with the Leviathan a scripture study about that. And I was so amazed. And then when I was looking at Godzilla, I'm like, that makes sense how they describe this guy. I mean, this animal, sea animal, and, um, and nobody could penetrate him. Nobody could penetrate him. And when I see Godzilla, I'm like, that's the Leviathan. <laughs> okay? And, um, and I seen this other uh, movie that's called Water Monster. Vicious. Forget about any kung fu movie. You watch uh, Sea Monster, it's off the chain. Okay, so that's the pestilence. You know, dogs um, for us. You know, they came for our ancestors, even though in the 60s and stuff like that, they were sicking dogs on our people in hoses. Hoses, which is water. And you think I'm going to worry about you and a flood? You're bugging. Now, blood water. I thought about that, and I was looking at the scriptures, right? And it was pretty much, you know, saying that um, there's so much prophets and innocent people being slain here that, you know, like he did with the Egyptians, you know, turning the water into blood, right? It's undrinkable, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, with this blood water, I'm thinking about Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan, okay, with that water, you know, and how they knew what was going on, purposely didn't do anything, and so many people passed away. You know, all glory to the Most High, Yah, because those, all those people that's in heaven that were slain by these enemies, oh, man, they're going to be so happy is going to be so happy when he avenges them. And he said he will, right? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Smallpox. You know, y'all did that to us. Y'all put them smallpox on us. Let me see, did I miss anything? Okay, no, that was the hurricane. They gave us smallpox. We had to wear a mask. I didn't see no white people wearing masks like this in the old days. But we was wearing masks. And y'all put that on dogs. And y'all putting that on us? Shame on you. Shame on you. But you know what? I'm kind of happy y'all did it. You know why? Because y'all are in the mask right now. Y'all are in it. And you ain't thinking you, you thinking you being protected. Y'all being shut up just like the Most High did us. Okay? Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. And we had chains around our neck. Look at that. Look at this. Y'all could go somewhere with, with, or with your calamities. I don't want to hear it. You pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you, you earn your way you earn your way in this world. Right? It's like he told us, right? And we wasn't even the ones who were being disappoint, um, dis, um, disobedient. We were the children of the ones that was being disobedient. You know, you could have taught us the truth. You could have showed us the truth because we had no idea what was going on. Just like my son right now, he don't have no idea why y'all treat him a certain way, why y'all view him a certain way. He didn't like y'all from the beginning. But who knows? Maybe he went there to tell the father, 
Yo, you got to do something with these people back there because they are just no good, okay? And knowing that my son smells so good because he was such a good soul, whew, he was just a good soul. So they probably said, we're going to have to go down there and see what's going on. I will not be silent no more. Look at what they did. Poor baby. But we have to go through it. We went through it. Now you all going through it. You'll go through it. And you're going to go through it for a thousand years. We went through it for 400 years, 800 years. You're going to go through it for a thousand years and, and, and not re recover from it. But look what they did with our mask. All these masks. All these masks. I'm glad y'all take pictures, yo. I'm glad y'all take cam um, had cameras and took pictures, yo. Because now we have cameras. We can take pictures and also film y'all. Okay? Y'all don't like it. But look, keep it up. Keep it up. And now y'all worrying about a mask. Chick, I don't care who they call you. Karen, put that mask on. Because nobody wants your diseases. Look at that. Good. Y'all want to put us in masks. You know what I'm saying? I don't want y'all nasty germs. So that's why I will wear a mask in a store. Y'all coughing and hacking, digging up your nose, and putting them on poles in a, in a subway. Disgusting. Reading and, and, and eating your boogers in front of everybody. Y'all disgusting. Y'all use the bathroom and don't wash your hands, you know, and, and, and come out the bathroom and all that. Y'all disgusting. Dis and y'all have maggots coming out your skin. You got worms coming out your skin. Get out of here. Put your mask on. Stay six feet apart. Y'all thought that was cute as a designer. Well, now you're going to wear it on your face. And you're going to wear this dress as a designer. You're going to wear it on your face now. And y'all going to deal with it. And nobody wants your diseases and infections around. And they're going to wear it like as a dress and, and, and be like, oh, fashion. Chick, you fashion now. All glory to the most high Yah. I ask come inside of me. Woo. And, you know, and do your thing because, you know, I'm, I'm here do, doing your will, Father. So that Flint, Michigan water, how dare y'all that y'all would just know these people are poison, poisoning us and don't do anything. And y'all can just go ahead and continue living your life and not be and have repercussions. Listen, I'm, I'm here to let y'all know that doesn't happen with the Most High. Once he's on you, he's on you. And it will cleave to you and everything around him listens to him. They don't listen to us. They listen to him. So when them locusts come, it's not because I called them. It's because the Most High sent them, and they and they obey. Just like a dog obeys, the Most High will have all things around him, the water, the, the, the effects of people's mind, obey. Now, the death of firstborns, which would be innocent killings, you know, like uh, taking the baby out the stomach, cutting them up and feeding them the alligators. I don't even know how much, how many y'all did. I know the abortions are high because you're so sweet with all that. Um, teen, it was so, what was it? It was back in the 80s. It was saying, um, babies having babies, babies having babies. But you don't know what the most high sends into this world. So babies having babies may look negative to you, chick, because you was a daggone lesbian, you know, and, and like that uh, Margaret Thatcher chick they killed all those babies and convinced us that oh you made a mistake okay so now you can terminate you can terminate it if it wasn't you saying terminate terminate because this is this is not how you want your life to go you putting doubt in our mind just like that little daggone devil that little snake in the garden Innocent killings, innocent killings of people, and you know, and what goes around come around. Okay, so that's going to be happening to y'all. I know with this coronavirus, 
you know, has been taking people out of here. I don't know if they're the firstborn of their lineage or whatever, but, you know, that's more study, more science, you know, more. It don't even matter. All right? But as, as long as y'all disrespect us and then treat us a certain way, and now the repercussions are coming on to you because of what your ancestors and you have done with us to us up until this day. So don't even get it twisted by saying, oh, I didn't have no slaves. I didn't do all that. Okay? But listen, what you do now is like solidifying what they had done. Okay? Whipping us and all that. Listen. It's going to cleave to uh, cleave to y'all like it cleaved to us, okay? If y'all don't do his law, statutes, and commandments and cleave to the house of Jacob, then you're going to go down as a stubble, okay? And it is what it is, and it is what it is. And you pull yourself up out the boost, bootstraps, you pray, you get down on your knees, and you repent for your sins. So maybe your mercy, he'll have some type of mercy on you. You still go through it. Let me let the word be out. But maybe it'll be a little less. You won't be enjoying the, the fruits of our labors. But you, you won't be as bad off as there's some very, very poor um, black people who are addicted. You know, they have their own life stories that goes through their own struggles according to the Most High. But you will still go through your punishment, but it would be according to the Most High. You won't be, you would be harvested and going through the hardship like us, but maybe your spirit or energy will be able to deal with it a little better because, you know, you have uh, repented of your sins and your forefathers' sins. All right, so I just want to let you know those prophecies that are unfolding is just, ooh, I got my little hair in twist. Those prophecies are unfolding, and I'm just letting y'all know that it's equivalent to the behaviors that, the comparison to the behaviors that was done to us from your forefathers. Listen, we don't really care about those um, Mexicans or Indians that say they're not the Israelites. You know, we're only really looking for the dark-skinned ones anyway. So if you Puerto Rican and you more um, with European genes, you go about your business. But if you um, Spanish, Puerto Rican with, a, with some melanin in it, then, you know, we're talking about you because we had um, the wheats and the tears. And a lot of these uh, people had um, made tears in the wheat. So the father didn't want to separate us at that time. But he says later on when the harvest is ripe, then he will separate the wheats from the tears, okay? And just like the sheep from the goats, okay? And he know, and you have these Spanish people like, oh, I'm, I'm European. I'm, mo I'm half European. No, you Spaniard and European. So that's what make you a Puerto Rican, okay? Now, some had um, Indian, like pure African, um, Hebrew Indian, like, like, like the guide, uh, Gadid, the Gads, Gadites, you know, that they're Israelites. But then they had um, slept or was forced to sleep with these Spa um, Spaniards and, and um, Spaniards. So they made them with that Puerto Rican look, you know, half black, half Puerto Rican. But let me tell you, the father would deal with that. He would reach her out just like he has been. Let's see here. So right now is really nothing for us to do but just cleave to the Most High and repent for our sins. And ask him to restore us, okay? And do all those things for us because he loves us. And apologize for your forefathers. Um, really apologize for your forefathers' errors and the things that you do. And you ask for the Father's guidance, you know, and to have mercy upon your soul. Thank you for waking us up. Forgive us for our sins. Please forgive us for everything, knowingly and unknowingly. We need to repent. Okay? Thank him for what's coming. Thank you, Father, for um, avenging us in your way, in your time. And we'll all know that you're the Father, you're the Lord. Well, the Elohim, the Adonai, 
Elohim. You know, there's so many ways uh, that we talk to the Father. But kumbaya and hallelujah is, are the most frequent, frequent ones used. All right? So all those bombings, as yet, as, that's just the calm before the storm. Flooding, calm before the storm. Um, and it's like, wow, the hurricanes, the snow, the blizzards, the frigid weather. You know, don't tell them what y'all did, what your ancestors did. And, um, and it's all in history books. And y'all make a joke, out of it, joke about it. If you want to put the truth, tell the truth, put it in a book. Because them, them um, Negroes don't read. And y'all really think that's the truth. But we do read. But we know how to keep silent. We know how to keep silent. And we read and we talk to the Most High. And we keep silent. But if he put us in a slumber, a slumber, if I put somebody in a coma, how do I expect them to be a genius? Knowing all the things that happens throughout the life, history. If I put them in a physical coma, so if the Father put us in a slumber and a sleep for our transgression and what was going to be transpired to us now, hmm, and we woke up, woe to you. And y'all think y'all going to put these vaccinations in us to, make the, to do all that against the Father? You're bugging. He knew that y'all were going to do this regardless. And y'all bugging all due respects. Because the Most High say he's going to take all understanding out of y'all. And y'all are going to be as stubble. So if you think that it's going to go back to normal, I don't know what your normal is, but it's going in the right direction. Okay? He's, he's, all the prophecies are coming true. All the things that he said he was going to do is happening. Hallelujah. He said that he's going to raise, raise the um, slain out the grave to be a great exceeding army. You think you're going to war with an ordinary person? Y'all bugging. Y'all think y'all going to take the life of George Ford, Floyd and not think he's coming back for y'all? Y'all not reading scripture. I don't care what book y'all read. Is, is, it doesn't t it, does it tell you that that, um, that enemy is going into the lake of fire? Did it, does it tell you that that's his demise? Did it, the, the book of Enoch, does it tell you about the fallen angels? And, what's gonna, and who's responsible for this? And whoever worships that or deals with them or help them to exceed, succeed, they, they're going to be gone in the lake of fire too. Yo, y'all are bugging. This is Miss Lady Lifestyle. This is my lifestyle. <laughs> and I just want to let y'all know I love the nation of Yasharel. I just, you know, they have the them homos and lesbians has to be weeded out. And the Most High is doing that. So I pray that y'all repent and change your evil ways because, you know, it's, it's unprofitable, okay? So even though these people do it, they're not doing it because um, they love you. They're doing it because of the warpness that's in their spirit and, and, and bringing you down. That's a device of the devil. And, and you have to stay away from that, the temptation of evil. You have to stay away from it, all right? So... Just be on the lookout and watch the shows and testify to the Most High. Read scriptures to let y'all know that this is, is expected. And, you know, and he warns us in advance. Don't take no shots. Don't take nothing. They give these brothers syphilis and don't even uh, help them out. They bugging. Cutting your stomach open and you're going to listen. Whew. I had back. I was vaccinated when I was a child with uh, uh, po um, chicken pox. I still got it though. What, what shots I took, you know? And right now, it ain't no more shots. Y'all can't smile on my face worth of nothing. And um, all that is happening. So just watch for the floodings. Keep praying. The bombings are gonna happen, but they're coming on um, the Edomites um, and the heathens. Hurricanes are coming. They're going to affect all that that hates the Most High and had something to do with bringing his children over into this captivity. Plagues are happening. Get used to it. Pestilence. Um, 
it's, it's going to happen. Is is what ha- is what you gave out is what's going to come. Like if I plant uh, beets, seeds, and, and grow and grow and grow, I'm expecting to see beets. I'm not expecting to put a beet seed in the ground and then it comes out oranges, bananas. No, it doesn't happen like that. So if the Most High give you a seed, a baby seed, it's either going to be male or female. If he gives a, 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 a dog a seed, then she either going to have male or female puppies. It's either or. It, 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 it is what it is. So if you plant that seed of evilness and wicked tree, all that is going to be out of here. So however you get out of here, that is how it is. Okay, blood water is coming, the death of the firstborn. And that's the innocent killings of people because they have family. They have mothers. They have fathers and brothers and sisters. And when y'all take an innocent life, yo, that's it. That's it, yo. That's it. You reap what you sow. Ask me how I know. You reap what you sow. Okay? So, it's late. (laughs) It's 1 a.m. But I love y'all. And it's never too late for the word because if Father's coming like a thief in the night, I'm up. And I pray that he's okay with the work that I'm doing. And I pray that it falls on somebody's ear before it's too late that this is what the Most High is expecting of us. Okay? Um, I love the shout-outs um, uh, for Big Judah, for Mike Malice. For uh, Sister um, Naja, um, I just want to re- say thank you so much for stepping out of your comfort zone. Um, a bad, we bad. You know, there's so many brothers and sisters that's doing the work of the Most High. And it's just been so encouraging to my soul. Because I, I share scriptures, I share scriptures. I really didn't want to be in the camera, on the camera like this. You know, but, you know, it is what it is, you know, at this point. You know, I watch um, Mike Allen King, Mark Allen King, and, you know, for so long it was just a picture, a picture, a picture of information, of information, of information. I love that, too. But then all of a sudden, he showed his picture. And it's like, wow, that's how you look? And your voice still sound the same? <laughs> Yeah, the delivery is still the same. Your information is still the same. Now I see the picture who Mark Allen King is. All glory to the creator. Peace and blessings be upon your soul too, brother. Um, I just meet people on social media doing this work, and I communicate. I, um, I give scriptures. I agree with them. I ask them questions. All glory to the creator. No disrespect, but I'm growing, and this is how I learn. And, um, and they give me so much information, a wealth of information, and I do appreciate it. All glory to the creator. You know, and I meet people that have land that's, you know, because the gathering is coming. And whatever feeling that they have in their heart, you know, they're doing the work for the Father and the people of Yashara. And that's how things come all together, right? You know, so I just love y'all and I want the best for y'all. And um, and for, for me also. So I pray that we do become a, a, a set-apart nation. And I pray that we do um, become God's, ch- um, God's children, God's people, and he's our God. You know, I love all of that. I love all of that, all of that. And I pray that this was edifying for you and plus give you some information to look into, okay? I love you. Peace and blessings to all. Shalom. I'm out. Peace.